Here I have a MacBook Pro from 2018, Intel i7 chip, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, Mac OS Sonoma. And here I have a MacBook Pro with an M2 Pro chip, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, Mac OS Sonoma. Was it really worth the switch or should I just return this new MacBook? Let's find out. My name is J.I. I make videos on the technology in our lives and how we can use it to make our lives easier. Now back in 2018, I purchased this MacBook Pro. That's six years ago, and usually devices in the tech world don't even last six years. Not only has this MacBook lasted six years, but it's still chugging along in a perfectly working state and is able to handle all the tasks I throw at it. Handling the task is one thing though. How long it takes for that task, well, that's a different story. I feel like I could probably squeeze a couple more years out of this MacBook before I really ended up getting frustrated, but an opportunity presented itself that I just couldn't resist. Cue the MacBook Pro with an M2 Pro chip. This machine was introduced back in January 2023, but it wasn't until recently that I bought this device. Why is that? Well, the refurbished versions popped up on Apple's website and the price was much cheaper than buying it brand new. So I wanted to give it a shot. Now, here's the thing. A refurbished MacBook is always the better value, especially when you buy it from Apple. It still carries a one year warranty that new devices have and you know that you're getting a quality machine that can last ages. Had Apple still been rocking Intel processors in these MacBooks, I would not even consider this. But given the fact that this new Apple Silicon is light years ahead of the Intel chip, I just had to give it a shot. My previous MacBook, although capable of rendering all of my videos and working on tasks, was starting to show its age. It would stutter at times and that fan was relentless. No matter what I do on the machine, it would fire up. You'd think I was working at an airport full time. Now, these were just minor nuisances, but nuisances nonetheless. And with the price of the MacBook Pro with the M2 Pro chip, I was willing to give it a shot. My justification? Well, I've gotten six years of value out of my previous MacBook. I can't think of any Windows machine I've owned previously that lasted this long and still was capable of handling everything I threw at it. I have also had no major issues with my previous MacBook, despite buying Apple Care on top which I didn't do this time around. So if this new MacBook with Apple Silicon lasts me six plus years, which I know it will, then I've already made my money's worth. I truly and honestly believe that these new Apple Silicon chips will outlast the Intel chips in terms of speed. I have a work laptop that is currently using an M1 processor and that thing still flies like it was brand new. I was even considering getting an M1 laptop for a lot cheaper, but I figured if this would be a five plus year investment, I might as well spend a bit more. Not to mention battery life is a dream on the new MacBook. I can get a full day of usage and even half a day of heavy usage when video editing. And that is thanks in part to the efficiency of the new processor. My old MacBook doesn't have a ton of charging cycles, but it would barely last a couple of hours when editing videos. If you travel a lot, Keep that in mind. The other benefit is not having to listen to my MacBook fan going off every other moment. That in itself has been a huge advantage as I can now record my videos and audio in peace and still get a smooth experience. Now design wise, I think Apple has implemented some much needed refinements in the new MacBook Pro M2, but still keeps the overall look and feel the same. For starters, you can notice the shell is a bit more boxy something I really like and gives it a more modern design. I was never a fan of the beveled edges, but that is just my opinion. Although the new MacBook is 14 inches, you'd think that 0.7 inches from the previous size wouldn't make a big difference, and it doesn't when it comes to form factor. But when it comes to screen, it's night and day. That's because the bezels are much thinner on the new MacBook compared to my Intel counterpart. We do have the notch on the new MacBook, but that has never bothered me since Mac OS utilizes the toolbar around that space very well. The keyboard is almost identical. Issues with the previous butterfly keyboards have been long gone and these have lasted quite a while. So I'm really glad that Apple is going with a tried and tested method for these keyboards. One thing you'll notice is the fingerprint reader is a bit different. It's more of a matte finish on the newer Macs, which I prefer over this glass material. And also there's no touch bar. Now I was actually nervous of moving to a MacBook without a touch bar because you know, I would occasionally use it on the old MacBook, especially when editing or using other programs. 
However, the more I use my new MacBook, the more I realize it's a nice feature to have, but not one that I would miss exceptionally. If you're someone who uses multiple monitors, this upgrade to the new MacBooks will be beneficial. We have a built-in HDMI port and SD card reader. It's a breath of fresh air not having to go around with a Thunderbolt adapter anytime I needed to plug in a TV or extra monitor, or even use an SD card for that matter. If you're thinking of moving from a 2018 or a 2019 MacBook, or even one that uses an Intel chip, a lot of the things I've mentioned before are things to consider when making the switch. The biggest one for me was the bump in the processing speed, the fanless design, and the incredible battery life. Everything apart from that were just bonuses. Not everyone edits videos or needs the processing power that I do. But the one suggestion I will make to anyone who's on a MacBook that doesn't have an Apple Silicon chip, switch over. Even if it's an M1 MacBook Air, you can get those for dirt cheap now, and a lot of the differences I mentioned before will be easily seen on that laptop, strictly because these Apple Silicon processors are in a category of their own. What do you think of the newer MacBooks, and what MacBook or laptop do you own? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to know what you're rocking and for how long. My name is J.I., thank you for watching, and thank you for kicking it with me.